In this week's video, I'm going to show you how to use the Autumn effect to create dreamy, magical landscapes. So let's start off in Lightroom. This is going to be really nice and quick. I've got two photos picked out. This one here of this nice cascading waterfall, and I've also got this one of this um, sort of old broken down ruins in the forest, both of which I think should be good examples of how to use the effect. Let's start with this one here though. And um, I'm gonna right click and we're gonna go edit in Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop and you do have to use Photoshop for this. It isn't something that you can uh, apply in Lightroom, at least not yet. Maybe it's something they'll add in the future. Now with this one, I'm gonna show you a really, really quick um, way of doing it. Um, just if you wanna apply the Orton effect to the whole image. Before we start, let's explain what the Orton effect is. It basically adds a nice softening glow to your images. And that's particularly important, I find, with a lot of landscapes, particularly anything with lots of fine detail. So maybe there's a lot of foliage, or in this case, lots of water. If we have a look down here, then you can see that a lot of this sort of water is really quite crispy. There's a lot of sharp details on this rock. And of course, you want your images to be sharp, but sometimes the nature of using such high resolution digital cameras is that everything just looks a little bit crunchy and actually giving it that slight filmic fantasy glow can sometimes look really, really nice. So what we're going to do is we duplicate this background layer by dragging it onto a new layer. And then we go to adjustments and we click on levels. Now at this point, we drag the whites right the way up, the blacks all the way down until we get this really awful looking high contrast effect. Now, I know what you're thinking, this looks terrible and you'd be absolutely right. We, um, so it's, don't worry, we're gonna, we're gonna fix this. We're gonna fix this, it's okay. Let's uh, click the clipping mask so that that now clips that levels to that background layer. So if we turn that off and on, you can see the difference it's made. And with this background layer selected, we're now going to blur it, blur it a lot. So we're gonna to go to Gaussian blur and not 1.3 pixels, we're gonna go really big. We're gonna go, maybe not that big, somewhere around 23. A lot of blur going on there. And now here's the magical thing when it happens. We grab that opacity slider, bring it back to zero. And as you might notice, certainly to my eye, it already looks far too sharp. It just suddenly pings back into, it's almost like you've applied a sharpening filter. So what we do is just very gradually increase the opacity of our combined new background layer, that blur and that levels. Those two things combined is the Alton effect. It's a blur and it's a bit of extra contrast. As we increase that opacity, look at the difference it makes. I'll try and sort of pulse it a little bit so you can kind of see with and without. But even at 4%, it's making a huge amount of difference. And I do tend to find that you don't need a lot of this effect. A little goes a long way. I tend to use it maybe around 9%. Let's leave it at, let's leave it at 10 for now. And let's just zoom back out. Look at all the details up here. It's suddenly we've got this really lovely glow coming in. Let's just turn that off and back on. Off and on, off and on. It really just gives this lovely ethereal glow. Let's zoom in a little bit up here. I think this is where it's really noticeable. And again, off and on. Look how much suddenly those, those really, really sharp details have been softened out absolutely gorgeous, looks really, really nice. And of course, you can tweak that to your heart's content. So let's turn that back on. You can increase the opacity if you want. I do find that, as I say, a little goes a long way, and I do see quite a lot of shots that, where people have applied this effect, and I think they've gone too far, where everything has this very dreamy glow. For me, I never go past 10%. Usually, I'm around 7 maybe 8 um, and that is about enough for me. And I think in this case, maybe 8% or nine, I think depends again on the scene. You might want to go for a bit more of a kind of a fantasy look. In this case, I do think it works really, really well. Um, but yeah, I think I think that's what actually worked quite nicely on this shot going for 9%. Those details have been softened. It really has added a lovely look to our scene, but we've only done one very small thing. We've, we've duplicated the layer, added the levels, blurred it, brought the opacity down, that's it. It could not be more simple to get such a beautiful, dreamy look to your shot. But 
I want to see if we can take this a little bit further because that is the basic way of just applying the look to your image in one go. So let's go back to our Lightroom shots and let's take a look at this one. Same again, edit in Photoshop. So we'll do the same process. We'll duplicate the layer. I'm going to go to filter Gaussian blur. It's going to do that same blur adjustments levels right up with that one right down with this one clip it to this and then we get that opacity and we drag it right down so we've got our Orton effect all taken care of and I've actually put the opacity down to 0% so um, you can't see it at all and as you can see we can just start to build up that effect but if I build it up it's of course applying everywhere in the image so Here's what I'm going to do with this one. I'm going to just uh, merge that levels layer down by pressing Command or Control and E, and I'm going to put that opacity to 100%. Now, of course, it looks absolutely ridiculous. So I'm going to click on the layer mask, and that's going to create a layer mask on top, and I'm going to invert it, Command and Control I, um, and that's going to hide that layer. Black in a layer mask hides the layer, and white reveals it. And so now, by using the brush tool, painting with white if any time i paint over with white on this mask it is going to reveal that effect now of course underneath it is set at 100 percent so if we just used a maximum flow of 100 every time we paint we just paint in the maximum effect back of course that isn't what we want to do but instead using the flow option flow basically means the amount of the um, uh, amount of whites you're painting in with every stroke. It is a percentage, so right now every individual stroke gives 100%, whereas if we take it right down to 1%, that means that one stroke just puts in 1% of white. And as you can see, you can build it up. If I scrub and scrub and scrub, you can see more and more of that effect being applied. So let's undo that. You get the idea, let's use a softer brush and we can just very gradually start painting in that effect where we want it to be applied. But because we're doing it selectively, it does mean that we can apply a little bit more, say in this foliage in the top right corner. Let's go for a, a 2%, just make things go a little bit quicker. But again, you need to be subtle with this tool. So you can paint it a little bit more here where you want that glow coming in. And we do still want it to appear in the leaves and things around here. We don't just want it in one location. So we can paint it around, paint it on this light, getting this sort of dreamy effect coming in. I think I may be going a little bit too far, and that's fine because we're using a mask. And so if I just press X or just swap these colors here, now we can paint with black, and painting with black hides what we've just done. So as you can see, now I'm literally painting back over that effect, and it's getting rid of it. So we can swap those colors again, paint with white, on top here, maybe go a little bit further around this this empty patch of sky to really help it sort of give that dreamy effect, that haziness coming in through the trees, but we don't want it quite as much down here. You know, I've gone far too far with this, but you get the idea, you know, we can still play with the opacity and just sort of bring that down. But as you can see, by using the mask and by painting in the effect, it gives us complete control over where we want it to be applied. So instead of just seeing it all over the image, we've just been able to put it up here in the sky, a little bit down here where the light's hitting it, and we've got this lovely dreamy effect. Let's turn it off, and all of this brickwork is very strong. You can see every single crisp detail on these leaves. It's far too much detail. It has a bit of a, uh, a crunchy look, and now we've allowed that effect just to pour in that light. It's softened it down. It's given a very lovely dreamy look um, that I'm really, really keen on, but it hasn't applied it everywhere. It's just applied it where we want. It hasn't suffered all the details around here. It hasn't given it too much of a fake fantasy look. It's just applied it exactly where I want it. And I think that makes it a really, really powerful tool. But that brings me to an end of this video. It's been very, very quick, very, very rough. Um, I'm still uh, basically in a bit of a building site in my studio at the moment. Um, so excuse the kind of rushed videos right now, but I do hope that it has been helpful to see how I would use these kinds of tools to enhance my images. If you have enjoyed this video, do please hit that like button, subscribe to my channel if you don't already, and I will see you next time.